What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's right. I'm here co-hosting with you today, Ben. And I gotta say, at the very least, I think at least my shirt knows what it's doing. I don't think your shirt has it. It's like, what? What's what you got going on over there? It, it, because it's like a it's like a it's like a hoodie slash shirt. Right. Yeah. You got like a you got like a t shirt with a hood. Well. Yeah. I, I have to tell you. Okay. So the the gym that we go to is like it's underground. It, you know. But like literally. But but, but, but literally. Like literally. <laughs> um, we we work with uh with a like a local trainer who um like is. It like so good about like form and making sure you're doing like your lips correctly and stuff. And it's like a very like intimate, like, uh, like gym setting. Like you would never, very community, small group based, very small group based. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, everybody like in this gym. Well, you you know, you would never show up and be like, who is this person attending class today? Like you, you know, everybody all the time and always. Uh, and so we were, um, he, he wanted to make like a new batch of, of shirts recently and he sent it over to me and I was like, holy goodness is that a t-shirt with a hoodie i am in so hard Mm -hmm. and i love it yeah i I was like i like honestly i was very excited about it i was like is this more like a fall type of thing like is it is it like a like an almost cool weather type of apparel and you know what it's a hot summer day and i'm wearing it and it's it's comfy it's cozy it's cool you know i think it does look like to be moisture wicking of some i guess if it rains you'll be lightly protected but not on your arms not on my arms yeah yeah but but your hair will be good thank the goodness thank the goodness i only actually i I do like it it looks very nice if people watching can see it if you're just listening it's exactly what it sounds like it's a t-shirt with a hood on the back it's a t-shirt with a hood on the back as soon as i saw it i was like i at some point in time i don't know what it's gonna be like maybe maybe it'll just be like uh like we'll call it like the ben carlin hoodie or something yeah and it'll just be like we'll just have t-shirts that have a hood and like some i'll have some type of ben carlinism on on the Mm. i think i think the fact that it's a t-shirt makes it work a lot more because let me tell you in high school uh once upon a time our like down the street neighbors sold like sports apparel or something do you remember this i do it was like their their entire garage was full of like it was it was like oddly like maybe slightly offshoot i don't know if they were like misprints that he bought in bulk or something i have no idea what they had excess and i remember there was like a just put the word out to the neighborhood kids that you you can just come take stuff Yeah. yeah yeah just come do you want something come take it and i went down there and i remember two particular pieces of clothing that i got on this particular day and both of them were in the same vein as the shirt you're wearing right now one was a short sleeve hoodie from i think like notre dame or something i remember that one yeah yeah, yeah. i had no uh, interest in attending notre dame or any fandom associated with them at all but i thought it was like oh what cool short sleeve hoodie. this is different neat i'll take this for free why not yeah and then i also had a uh completely sleeveless hoodie for oregon Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which I thought was a little bit cooler. I was much more into like the or the uh, the universe. Well, yeah, University of Oregon because uh, of Steve Prefontaine. because of Steve Prefontaine, of course. You know, being all into cross country stuff. So that one made a little bit more sense uh, to at least own. But let me tell you that I think I was singular in my admiration of the sleeveless or short sleeve hoodie in high school because not once was I able to get away with wearing either of these articles of clothing without being like what what is the point of that what why what i don't get it like it's like guys just you i feel it, no matter you could not stop the overreaction it was it was unbelievable i i merely <laughs> argue that you were you were simply ahead of the game i think so. that's, a, that's a trend think. setter mm-hmm. if you will yeah like i said maybe like i i think maybe they were misprints so maybe what happened was it was originally like a full length hoodie and someone was like ah the arms got all jaggled up so we're just going to cut those off and we'll make it we'll make it sleeveless and or short sleeve maybe and well so maybe they were really the true cutting edge no pun intended oh. uh folks in in this particular situation but it, it's interesting to me yeah because it's like to now it really doesn't feel like that this is really even that ambitious of a combination of the ideas to me oh uh, yeah but it's like yours is like i think the problem was mine still looked like sweatshirts that had been transformed yeah and it was this this is so clearly it's like that's not even close to being a sweatshirt it's like oh yeah that's its own it's completely adopted it's not like half it's not like taking two half ideas and making a whole 
Right. It's just a, it's a complete new idea. It's its own thing. It's its own thing. Yeah, because this would, I mean, this is this is at best a t-shirt. So it's not even like, it wouldn't be like warm in the same capacity as a hoodie. I there's For some reason, I even feel like I would just probably never use the hood function. It's, it's just like, fashion. The hood is, is it's like an accessory yeah. of, the, of the shirt. Right. Because what everyone knows t-shirts needed was more accessories. Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, they had pockets. Now they have hoods. Right. Sometimes right. you had that little front pocket, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember Sometimes those. you have the crew neck or the V neck. You know. Hey, what about wallet chains? Wallet chains. What, what, what is what is the function of a wallet chain? Is this like a <laughs> don't get pickpocketed type of device, like an anti theft device for your wallet? You know, I've never given it much thought. It to me was always strictly a fashion sort because it looks sort of like a like a choke collar that's attached to your wallet, but also your belt. Loop, yeah, right. I think maybe, maybe. That's, I don't actually know where where it. I don't actually to. know. I've never really, I've never used one or worn one in any capacity, and nor have I even considered the function of one. But yeah. well, it 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 almost must be that that it's it is like there must be a clip on your wallet to clip to the chain that is then clipped to your pants or the inside of your pocket, right? Like I, this is the thing. I don't think in my entire life, thirty one years of living, I have ever witnessed somebody who has a wallet chain actually pull out their wallet because it seems like it could be cumbersome and or in the way yeah you know or like you know maybe there'd be a situation where you need to like show your id but you just want to show them like a, like the clear flap and so like you'd like pull it out of your pocket and be like can you lean in because i can't i actually can't show it any further because my wallet chain maybe um the, the only other function i could think of it is if you had such deep pockets that you needed like a an attachment <laughs> to like fish it out <laughs> like hold on now let me retrieve Let it. Me reach I, in. I have a chain. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever seen like a well before the way that people used to acquire water? <laughs> this is much the same. I have a bucket on the end exactly. that my wallet sits in that sits it's, the it's bottom way of my down pocket. The pocket. But but you, you laugh, but I've never seen anyone carry a wallet chain that didn't also have extremely baggy pants. This is reasonable. You know? This is reasonable. I and you know what it's so funny too, because when we were when we were growing up, the uh, Lee pipes. Yeah, were, the Lee were, pipes. They were the super in the yeah, they were yeah. They were jorts that were like, but they were like cool, which I guess jorts are in again right now. Yeah, like they, they go in and out. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would, I would wear a pair of jorts. I think I would probably go for it. Okay. Yeah. Prove but, it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Um, but uh, the, the Lee pipes back in the day, it was kind of like a like how far can we push the envelope on how baggy these pants can be like mm -hmm. it was almost like I think it must have been coming out of the era because I remember our dad growing up had a pair of like they were like five inch inseam like khaki shorts that he would use for like mowing the lawn or painting or something but they were like short shorts right like shorter than than average shorts but it may have just been that we weren't alive yet during the era when when this was like the in thing and he just never like adopted like the baggy shorts look right Which, to be to be fair i do feel like now the shorter cut shorts are once again the in they're back in uh, they're back in um they live but, up to their yeah i this is a weird <laughs> thing forever because to me short like the like shorts have never been really short. Right. You know, like for as long as I, since, since elementary school, like if I had shorts, they came down at least to my knees. Right. Like I always, I always sort of thought like the top of like right on the top end of like your kneecap was, yeah. I think where it was kind of like, that's where I wanted them to fall. Yeah. Um, but like, I remember when we were in elementary school, we got really into the, the Lee pipes, but I remember I, I had one friend whose name was Pablo and he showed up to the 4th of July one year. So it was like, you know, school had ended and I hadn't seen him for like a month and a half or whatever. And I remember him showing up and he was wearing like jean shorts that were so long that they literally went all the way down to his feet, but they were like decidedly <laughs> like not, not jeans. Yeah, yeah, they weren't like, they weren't <laughs> jeans. They were still jorts. They were just like, if you were supposed to, like if, if, uh, you know, I mean, at the like, time, like each leg had its own dress on it. Yeah, it was like a tube yeah. that like hung down, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, if you had been like, maybe like six foot eight, these could have been like appropriate shorts for you. But Pablo was probably, you know, being like a, like a fourth grader was probably, I don't know, like four foot two. Mm -hmm. So they were just, it was like he, he went and bought the biggest shorts they sold at the big and tall and he wore them. Right. And it was, I, I, to this day, it was always like, I think that was like the moment when I was like, okay, it's gone. Like maybe, maybe 
the long shorts, the long jeans, the long jorts have gone too long. That's it. That you was, know, that was, was, that was yeah, your tipping point. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was mm, like, okay, it's like, I, like gone too far. I understand pushing the envelope, but it's like when you have like, like left, uh, uh, like just shorts in your rear view mirror. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, Hey, at some point you're just wearing pants. At some point you're just wearing pants. And at this point in time, they are not fashionable pants. Right. Yeah. You know, like you got <laughs> like big tubes of denim. Yeah. Sur- <laughs> surrounding denim your- tubes. Denim- as I like to call them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, they're, they're not jeans. They're not jorts. They're denim tubes. Mm. There so, you go. Or dubs. Or well, dubs. That's, that's probably that's probably something else. I think. No, yeah. I think. I think. <laughs> I, think I, I think dubs is already claimed. Yeah. By by some other thing. Um, okay. So speaking speaking of elementary school. Mm. Um, actually, let me let me pause right there. <laughs> Quick sidestep. I had somebody. Um, uh, send me an email talking about our accents because what accents? we, we grew up. <laughs> what in are like, you talking about? <laughs> like we grew up in the almost the almost South where like Virginia is oh, like yeah. you said it. You said South there. The, the, the South. The South. So this person, though, they said that like they can they can hear like the slightest like twang of of me having like a more southern accent yeah. than you but in addition to this this like like hint of twang southern sounding voice i also apparently have like some other accent entirely also oh interesting and i think it's because very frequently i will like like really especially on the pop i don't know that i always talk this way in real life but i feel like because i can hear my own voice in the headphones in my ears it's a weird feeling yeah i like i enunciate like i i like really spend time on like each part of the word uh. and so i think i think that's what's happening um but oh, i just that like, you have this weird because much much of like really southern sound and talk doesn't have a whole lot of enunciating in it exactly it's yeah. like you, like everything is like sort of like rounded soft edges yeah but like you know i just said like elementary right you know and it's almost like i i said like every part of of the word right whereas like <laughs> if, I, if i was like just talking to you or like you know asking about like 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 when does luke start elementary school you know like i wouldn't say it quite so i don't know spelled out dictated Mm -hmm. you know so anyway as i was saying that i was like huh that reminded me of that one email that i read that one time um (laughs) so that's that's all that's all all i got there interestingly as luke and nick and nate or while luke's talking you know significantly more now and like nick and nate are starting to get a few words but even just the barest words they have there is that like southern twang underneath a lot of the way they talk and i'm like where is this coming from because you sound like way more southern than we do but that was the thing when we yeah. were kids we were exactly like that too like yeah. I, I always go back our dad made the year in carlin every year which was like a like a compilation of all the mm-hmm. things that happened in the carlin family set to <laughs> you know pop hits from the year and i always remember in 1996 the year in carlin 1996 you you like were reading this thing it said this year we got torch yeah and yeah. it's like i can hear that's our dog it's the torch. most famous line from any year in carlin was this year we got torch this year we got torch <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it was it was dead on. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like much more around us where we live than we realize. And maybe. so like as Luke is developing, you know how he talks. He's he's like picking up on going beyond like how you and Beth might be, right? And, and taking in like all these other like tiny little details from all around him. Uh, and that's part of it. Actually, on this note as well, tell me if I've already brought this up because I thought it was the most interesting thing and told just about everybody I knew when I first heard it. But I was watching a TikTok the other day where somebody was asking, why does why is it when they watch all of their home movies from like the late 80s, early 90s, it seems like everybody talked differently, like the dialect, the English dialect across the board was very different or if you um if you go back and do you remember tom brokaw who was like the like news anchor like oh the, yeah the, the 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 guy like even the way that he like would tell a story uh on the news was was different like the way that he talked okay. was different okay yeah. so apparently in the 90s like what was happening to like the the english dialect for i guess american uh, English speaking people was actually morphing specifically due to like the punk music that was coming out during the time and like UK artists versus uh, American artists 
who were like slowly like changing the way that they were like creating that that voice for punk music that like we all know so well like like where are you and i'm so sorry oh, like, okay you yeah. know like that um nice no keep going <laughs> i can't do it my 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 pulse like if i if you had a heart rate monitor we should keep one right here just like so you can see it yeah like i, I was like i know i'm gonna have to do it like i know i'm gonna have to give the example and my it's gonna make me i'm sweating um but apparently like that kind of specifically punk music, like that voice that you can recognize, like the very uh, like Blink-182 voice yeah, literally was like changing the like English speaking American dialect in some way. Right. And like so, the, sort of like the cadence in which we deliver conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's like if you were to go back and, and watch all those home movies from before this period of time, you would notice that people speak differently. And I, I just thought it was so interesting because I almost do think of punk music as slightly niche, mm -hmm. you know, like it's not it's not necessarily not never, but not necessarily like your your top 40 hits. Well, I think in the 90s, it was a lot more mainstream. OK, because that was sort of like the, the theme of the music itself was I don't know. Well, maybe uh, that I mean, didn't make sense the way I said that, but <laughs> sure, I understand. No, no, no. But yeah. it's like I think when I think of the '90s, it may be in part due to the fact that I didn't really start listening to my own music uh, until I was like the later '90s, like '97, '98, '99, when I was like, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade, uh, where I was listening to you know like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears and other cool things at the time. Yeah, I think like our '90s experience was much more on the pop side yeah. of things. Yeah. Whereas I think like if you were maybe even just Five, maybe like two, three, five years older than us, it was much more to the like grunge alternative rock kind of right. uh, 90s music. Right, right, yeah. right. So anyway, I mean, this is hopefully, hopefully I was able to properly tell this story. You can, I'm, I'm certainly no expert on no. The dialect. Actually though, you telling this story has reminded me of a topic I wanted to talk about on the pop a while ago, but I, and I think we should do it because it was a very interesting thing and I think it'll be fresh on my mind now, but it's going to take me a second to look it up so the ethan we might need a transition and we're back and we're back okay so i put this in the notes forever ago i completely forgot about it because we totally skated over it but this is an awesome feature of the Mer i think it's from the merriam webster website okay like the dictionary the dictionary you know, yeah. you know everyone's on the dictionary website all the time constantly yeah Hi right. highly influential yeah is the dictionary i would almost say the google search bar has like replaced the dictionary it's like there are so many times when google can just tell like you're just looking up the definition of a word oh yeah yeah, you know, yeah. it's like and it's like, amazing yeah it's like no you're not looking for search results based on this word it's obvious you just want the the, the definition definition and or the spelling. Yeah. There it is. Okay, great. So you don't have to. You don't have to enter. Sometimes it's just like you spelled this wrong. Oh, okay. that's what I was looking for. Google. Thanks. <laughs> you get me. You anyway, get me. Okay. So what we have here, Ben. Okay, lay it on me. Is the uh, dictionary's time traveler function, which is it will tell you when a word was first used in print. So like if you go back to like the year I was born in 1988, you can look and see all the words that were like introduced that year. What? I know into the dictionary or like in print must have, must have been the first time they appeared like in a newspaper or in the dictionary or something. Okay. Okay. But okay. Some of them are, I thought some of these were like, uh, let's just go down here. Like this one immediately blew my mind. Adaptive cruise control. What? I know was first used in 1988. And I was cause, cause if you're buying a car now, that's like a selling feature. It is. It's like a like a new feature. I, mean, I would even go so far as to say because adaptive cruise control, in case you're unaware, is the ability of the car to basically use like a like a some type of radar or sonar or something to track the car in front of you and and adjust your speed accordingly so that like if you are on cruise control like on a big long road trip yeah. and somebody pulls in front of you who's going like slower, you don't have to like cancel out cruise control like slow down for this person you know like set it back in do whatever and then like you know they move over and then you have to like speed up again so it like well it'll like live do it but i would imagine that in 1990 1988 yeah that just basic cruise control hard stop would have been like a cutting edge exactly feature of a car. I'm like because they didn't have adaptive I'm, i can only guess that people were guessing at adaptive cruise control or else people have been sitting on this forever for no reason it is outstanding to me sometimes when you discover that not even discover but like how much people were able to exactly this predict this particular particular type of thing like i remember reading ender's game which was like written before 
like home tablets ever existed by like a measure of 30 years. Right. And literally all the, all the kids go to class in this like futuristic space environment with, with effectively tablets. Yeah. They call them desks, but they're like, yeah, they're tablets, they're tablets and they have like text messaging and you're like, man, like, was it commonplace enough that you could have just like, like, like this is, this was more present. This thought was more present. Right. Then we'll be able to send each other text digitally soon. So eventually. Yeah. 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 Like, cause I, I even remember like the very first commercials ever for texting. And it yeah. was like, you know, like the letter C, the letter U L eight, the number eight R, you know? And it was like, that was like them being like, check it out. You can like shorthand everything. Like right. see you later. See you later. Yeah. G two G. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Give me another word. Okay. This one, I can't, this one I almost can't believe was it took until 1988, but JPEG. Oh, weird. I know. Right. Like, Oh, that, that's when JPEGs became a thing, I guess. Or at least when they appeared in print. Okay. That's sort okay. of same with um. So like a, like a, like a photo file. Yeah. Yep. So like an M. Yeah. Yeah. So like what you would save as um emo. <laughs> e- okay. <laughs> emo and gangsta to go in with our music there. <laughs> that is that's another one that's very that's very interesting. Is like um, I wonder because I feel like by the time I got to high school, so now you'd be talking like. 2004 through 2008 yes. like the word emo was was used as like a um like very commonly like a a type of uh like look or lifestyle that you may have yeah is like like someone someone may have been emo i i think i'm using that right yeah uh it was like it was like a aesthetic almost it was an aesthetic or like a mood yeah 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 that's I, what you'd I, call it now like that guy that has such a mood i associate it and and maybe maybe this is like super generalizing like the whole the whole idea but i associate it with safety pins i don't know why like <laughs> interesting i don't know if maybe what was happening was like patches could have been like a very um like like thing that would have fit this particular vibe and people didn't know how to like iron them onto their backpack so instead of ironing them on they just literally like fasten them with safety pins someone will have to let me know okay is are that you a thing knowing correctly yeah yeah yeah. okay like, we're, we're safety pins part of the look here's one i cannot believe was not in print until 1988 are you ready yeah lay it on me unibrow you're joshing I am me. not joshing you. It is right here. I could like, how was no one used unibrow in print before 1988? I disagree. Uh, there's no way, there's, right? There's, there's no, no way. way for people had like, this means people didn't have a word for unibrow. Right. Unless right. They were, or they were calling it something else. What was it? What was used? Pre unibrow Mo- monobrow okay. single brow. I don't know. Those don't even unibrow is the, is the word. It is the word. It yeah. is the thing. It is the thing. It's the correct word. Yeah. What would you, what would you have called it? They didn't not. I mean, this is another weird thing about like words. It's like what, when there's not a word for a thing, you know, like I think the, the vlog brother is always very famously realized that you have a word like the, the word like virgin exists. Like if you have, uh, you know, never, had sex before okay. there's that right, but yeah. there's not a word for if you have <laughs> like, like the opposite of a there's, virgin. yeah what's the opposite <laughs> that is there's not a word that, what if there is my brain's just not getting there this is oh my gosh <laughs> i remember a year one super carlin brothers video <laughs> where we were talking about uh I, I think i was talking about like the joker from the dark knight or something and i was like you know there really needs to be a word for someone who is famous for like a negative reason and it's like the word's just infamous the word's just infamous and i was like i I remember i think it was my question of the day that day i was like guys help me come up what would we call this you know and it was like (laughs) it was just like infamous there there is a word there is a word this was i go back to all my year one videos and i feel like this was just like very frequently i had i thought that i had such scope on a topic to discuss it and then it was just usually the case that I just was blanking. It, it's a very weird combination of like your brain, like independently arrives at a lot of things, but because you arrived there without any reference from anything else, it like comes off as almost ignorant. Yeah. Like, how do you not know the word? Like, like you arrived at the concept of infamy independently, but you somehow also remain sheltered enough to need to do that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You No, that is, it is such, it is such a good way to describe. It's like, yeah, the two sides of those coins are very weird because it's like, it's impressive that you got there, but it's also very unimpressive that you needed to get there. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so uh, this, I feel like this happens. I, I had one the other day that this was like, 
Th- this is probably another one of those situations where it's just like, yeah, like, like maybe obviously, but I was thinking to myself like about this idea of, of like how, what would be like a really good unifying idea that like, that like everybody could like relate to. And under that idea, like put together a set of like best practices for how to exist like with with all of the other people around you, and oh, I was right. like, like morals, or, like yeah, and or I was like, like the law <laughs> or like religion, yeah, you know. And so like the thing that came to mind is I was like, oh, fear of death, and then I was like, you know what, that is religion. <laughs> like, hey, I, yeah. <laughs> way to get there, Ben. I know, I way know, to get I know. there. Yeah, so I was like, guys, I I on my own invented religion. <laughs> this. <laughs> This this now week. you sound like a cult leader. That's no, we're no I'm there. not. I'm not suggesting you you go to join Ben in his quest for worldpeace.com.org. Okay, yeah, please don't do that. I'm switching <laughs> years, and we're gonna switch switch gears back into years. Okay, that, we'll sw- uh, now we're on your birth year. Oh, okay, great. 1989. Okay. 19. <laughs> yes, we're on your birth year. Yeah. <laughs> um. Here's the, uh, let me, let me just look. I haven't looked through yours before, but okay. Caffeinate. What? No. Like, ca- like what? Certainly caffeine. People knew about caffeine. Maybe you didn't describe it as like caffeinating. I mean, caffeinate surely, that. surely it's caffeinated. Right, right, right. Like I'm maybe, thinking of diet Coke. It maybe, has to be associated. It has to be. It has to be. <laughs> it's like, I think it's because that's like the verb of caffeine, you know? So it was like the ability to make something. Okay. Like, w- which maybe prior it was like there were substances that contained caffeine right you know like coffee beans or something yeah but this was almost like the ability to like take the take that caffeine and apply it to something that maybe wouldn't have naturally had its own caffeine i sup- yeah that makes sense or maybe people were maybe starting to like self caffeinate like that like maybe people just drank coffee as like uh because they enjoyed it and now it was like for the caffeine oh maybe. i have no idea and it's how can caffeinate not have been used in print before then? Give me another one. Give me another one. I need one more. One more. Okay. This game is okay. way too fun. I, it is so weird. Let me find. Um, bu- 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 uh, are some of these you can just like accept that some they, of, some of them are just not very interesting words. Okay. Um, scrunchy. What? Scrunchy. Scrunchy. Like for your hair. For your hair. Scrunchy sounds like one of those things like Kleenex where it's like scrunchy was the brand, but then like like it became so common practice that everybody referred to like those hair ties as scrunchies to where it was like scrunchy lost the ability to. Oh, maybe. Like, I, isn't this like potentially happening with Google right now where it's like, like the word Google is so synonymous with searching for something on the internet. We, like, were, we were just doing it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's like, um, is, is that like one of those, is that one of those things that Google, they must be fighting is the, the push for it to basically just be like, no, this is just, this is what this word means now, or it's an alternate meaning for the word. No, Google, Google does not want that to happen. No, of course they yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, cause then, then they lose the ability to like have the Google name. Yeah. I think it's like a trademarked s- yeah. something or another. Um, so, but I'm, I am curious cause it almost feels like it should have happened by now. So this makes me think that like there are some big time lawyers somewhere whose main job it is to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah. Well, if anyone has the money to do that, it's Google. It is. So. It, is. It, feel, it feels like a documentary that will happen at some point in time. Right. Okay. Let me ask you about this though. Cause you, you talk about like Google having like so much money and it's like, it's like one of these like fixtures of our world where it's almost like <laughs> there's no way. Do, do I still have you? Yeah. I'm sorry. I was looking ahead to the year 2020 to see what words were new in 2020. And it's a much shorter list. Almost all of them have to do with COVID except one, which is murder hornet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, remember that week last year? <sighs> if only that had been our biggest that problem. Was, yeah, could you imagine if that was... For some reason, you can't choose the year 2019. Maybe there were no new words in 2019. That's weird. It, it was an unproductive was year an for unproductive words. unproductive year. Words, they're just getting behind. Look, 2018, only three new words. Well, we're slowing down. We're, we're using more words. Down. We've just, we're figuring out all the words. All things are becoming named. Yeah. 
basically, is what I'm understanding. Man. Okay, sorry. What were you... You were you were in the middle of something. I started laughing at murder hornets. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you needed to be distracted by one thing in particular, the most acceptable would have been murder hornets. It's always acceptable to be distracted by a murder hornet. It is. It yeah. is. We could make that... We could put that on a t-shirt. It yeah. is always acceptable to be yeah. distracted by a murder yeah, hornet. Like, sorry, am I keeping you from something? Yeah, well, it's just this murder hornet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah, if there's a murder horn at present, bring it up. Bring like, it up. Cut people off. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. So that being said, though, talking about like Google as this like massive force, this massive entity, this thing that like like is an immovable object of like United States corporate existence. Mm-hmm. It's I feel the same way very much about like like Amazon. You know, it's like like it is it is so ubiquitous. It is everywhere. Like I think that there's a stat that like two out of three Americans use it. It's like it's a lot, like like a crazy amount. We all have Amazon in common, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that and fear of death. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my religion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, no, but so I was reading. I was reading the other day because people have talked about like maybe sort of this like unprecedented amount of of just like presence, but what the, what this argument was making is that apparently Sears going back to like the, I think like 60s, 70s, like when, when catalog ordering was like the way that you would yeah would you purchase. Do the, yeah. You do the thing. You would do the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like, and now like when was the last time you shopped at a Sears? Uh, never been never. It seems like they sell vacuums. It seems I'm, I'm surprised you went to vacuums of all things. I would have gone to maybe big screen TVs or lawnmowers I, I also, or treadmills. I could see all of these things. Those are all I'm pretty sure within about 20 feet of each other at the Sears at our mall. Well, we don't we, it closed. It's oh, no long, it is no the last longer time I was at the Sears at our mall. You That's, could be shopping next to you could be shopping for a big screen screen TV, not 10 feet away from someone shopping for a lawnmower. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was like, it was like, how are these things so close to one another? It's it's very weird now that you're comparing it to Amazon because so often whenever I was like walking through Sears, because you had to like walk through there to get to the rest of the mall. Right. It was like one of the entrance stores. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like, what is this place? What did they even sell? They sell everything and seemingly nothing. Yeah. Like. but but yeah, if you were to describe Amazon, it's like yeah. What would you go to? What would you go to Amazon for? Literally anything, and that's basically what I guess Sears was at one point doing. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. in person. So like, I think if you were to like talk about talk to our grandparents about like Sears as an entity, they would have seen it the exact same way that we probably see Amazon in the present. Yeah. Which is to say that like it is. It was just like, it was the place you go. It is where everybody shops for everything and they sell everything. Yeah. And so I think like what, what is, what's kind of mind blowing to me would be like imagining that world where like we have not just kids, but grandchildren and they would have like a similar take on Amazon. Yeah. They're like, oh God, what are you guys still shopping on Amazon? Okay. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, my, my dad still goes online or my, my grandfather still goes online and he likes to order things on Amazon. They have the two day shipping thing. It's like, they're whatever. It's like, yeah. When, I mean, you can go, you can go over here to, I mean, I, you can put it right at the transporter. You can have it in literal seconds, literal seconds. Like he, they don't trust the transporter. Huh? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That was that was the number one thing from from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is I think that they had a like a microwave oven where you could like order and it would like it would like you know microscopize the the particles and like reconstruct it in your microwave. Yeah. So you could just like you know punch in something and have like a chocolate yeah. bar like in, in your whatever. There it is. And it's like whoa, that is neat. I wonder. I wonder if this is like us describing what was it adaptive cruise control Ada- yeah right yeah this is this is the equivalent right we, we this are was pre- the first time transporter was put in yeah <laughs> no Tra- yeah. everybody has to have their home transporter That's um, right. yeah no so anyway somewhere along the way i we we tangented because you brought up the thing about words but i was going yeah. to step over into uh like I, I was going to say like elementary education, but also maybe even like one step beyond that is just just general education that I think it's really interesting that we don't have as like more of an integrated part of just growing up is I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. You were so distractible. OK, so murder hornets. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Not a, not a good opportunity for murder hornets. Um, 
No, where was it going though? Oh, okay. So it's just like this general sense of knowledge on how to do things. So, so your wife, Beth, at one point in time recommended to me this Instagram page where it's literally someone who is like uh, like a house cleaner. Yeah. You know, like there's someone who comes in and does like that deep clean of your house. Like you would hire them and they would, they know how to like do all the stuff. And they've got like the like the buckets with the different types of chemicals and, and like rags and wipes and, right. and all the different stuff. And so since she showed it to me, I've actually become quite fascinated in this corner of just general social media. So yeah. Instagram, TikTok, both. Like I, I follow people that like just show you how to clean things. Yeah. And very frequently it's just like basic household cleaners. And it's like, just go and service your whatever, like take care of your things. And it's like the fact that like someone has to like that, like I, that I am the age that I am. And I am just like, I'm just now learning it because there is someone out there who realized that there was like such a significant need for how to clean a thing. Yeah. Like, cause for me, I would say that like the way that I clean everything is I have all purpose cleaner. Yeah. And everything is clean. <laughs> Says it right here. All purposes. All purposes. It's like <laughs> all things can be cleaned. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 it doesn't specialize in anything. It's just generally good for everything. Right. And because of that, you know, I don't know. It's just I am blown away by the fact that this is like something that you do need to be taught. And so like going beyond that, though, it's also things like, you know, how to do an oil change on your car. Like how hard do people think it is to change your oil? Like uh, there, there is probably the layer of it is maybe more like inconvenient to do this particular task sure. because like it might require like potentially jacking up your car and crawling underneath it and you might need like a tool to like open. I know. assume. Yeah, I my guess for changing your oil is that you need to be beneath the car with the wrench and something to catch the oil and then that when it comes out sure and sure. then you just pour more in the top and that's it right 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 but like you know compare that to like the idea of like you being the person who like mows your own lawn or something it doesn't feel like that's like a particularly difficult thing to do and yet it does require like going and spending hours outside in the sun and you do have to do it fairly frequently and you have to have a special piece of equipment to do it yeah and yet as but like many 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 people do yeah you know so it's like is is this the type of thing where like more people would just change their own oil if you just knew how like to do it uh probably i mean it feels like daunting and yeah the question is yeah like do are people not cleaning like their you know dishwasher filter because they don't know their dishwasher has a filter yeah or because yeah. they just don't know how like yeah i because that that i use that as an example because i also am familiar with the page you're talking about and i was you know scrolling through it and it was like oh yeah did you know your dishwasher has a filter it's super easy to clean you just pop it out rinse it off and you might want to take all the clunks out you know or all the big chunky things down there and it's like if you didn't know be prepared there's probably a lot of things down there oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and you're like wait a minute what there's a filter like how what yeah like when you go in like yeah you buy your dishwasher you buy like a washing machine like how little time if any at all do you spend learning how to maintain that machine? Right. Like none, none. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it, there's so many of these things that exist out there in the world that are just like, just like general information, just like things like when you go to school, you should just have a class that is just like general info 101. And it's like every single year they just, they take you and you spend time doing some of these things, you know right. I mean? Like the one that everybody always brings up is like, you know, how to balance a checks checkbook or like manage your finances or, you know, things like that. But even the idea of like, making a big financial purpose, a purchase, uh, like what types of things affect your credit score? Mm -hmm. Like how much money do you need to make in order to like purchase a house safely? You know, it's like there, there's like all these like big questions that once you're out in the free world, it's kind of like you're just, you're trailblazing stuff that plenty of people just know how to do right it's like why why are like why are we all left out here finding our own paths when it's just like generally known information like is there just a limit to how many things they can teach us or is it the case that like learning history is like this much more important than knowing like how to maintain your dishwasher like and i know that that sounds ridiculous because yeah. because 
of like history is obviously incredibly important and there's like tons of stuff to know about it, but it's also like you may not interact with historical things. Maybe every, maybe this is a bad example because yeah. history just feels like it is always important, but um, just, just take like a topic. I don't know, like English literature or something like that, where it's like, how much is that going to come up versus like things you are definitely going to be right. Like running into as your life progresses. I guess it's, it's, I mean, we're getting into a whole conversation then about, you know, education and what should be taught in schools and things like that. Sure. But it's like, yeah, it's the question of what do you, do you think anybody's ever talked about that before? I think plenty of people talk about it and yeah, uh, <laughs> I, it, it is a weird question of like, what, what are you expected to just sort of like learn at the house and what should the, you know, country be responsible for you knowing? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't even know where this would exist, but I feel like, like, I almost feel like I could like, or that it would be interesting to just have a huge warehouse just full of like tons of stuff and just literally teach classes on like all of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, here's a little bit that you can know about all stuff, like all the stuff. Here's a place you can go and practice changing your tire. Right. You know, like, because it feels like tires always go flat when it's pouring rain and you're on the side of the highway. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. The first time most people learn how to change a tire is when you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Which is an extra layer of frustration on top of what is undoubtedly an extremely stressful situation to anyway, begin with because yeah. you were just in probably a near car wreck because your tire popped right or else uh you just have gone onto uncomfortable road and that's what caused your tire to pop but, right yeah, yeah or like, or you're in you're in a, like a like a circumstance um like where you're dealing with with quite possibly one of the most expensive individual things that you own which is your car and so it's like we're like very hesitant to like touch them at all for fear of like breaking them right you know it's like well, i don't want to mess up um and the, like for me i remember the first time i ever got a flat tire i was like off-roading and i was like going up this like really crazy piece of terrain and the tire didn't like pop it like exploded boom there was like a like a nine inch hole in it uh and so it's like the first time i was ever changing a tire was quite literally like on the side of like a wall of earth you know and right. like i'm like i guess i gotta put a jack under here and it's like it's not flat ground and like i don't even know how to take the one off the back I yeah mean, you know it's like everything <laughs> you know, about like, it was yeah, someone the instruction manual or? i really need to not call mom and dad because they really need to not know that i'm here all right so i'm to figure this out no yeah. yeah yeah so i remember the first time i ever uh had to change a tire i was driving uh beth home so i was just in between our houses and i remember it taking me about five seconds after the tire had blown to like figure out in my brain what had happened Oh, 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 like, like while you're driving the car, it's like you have, you now have a flat and you're, it's right. almost like, why is the car driving? Yeah. It's like something is wrong. Is it? The, and it, I remember like we made it enough down the road that like, I definitely should have pulled over earlier, but I remember when they eventually, you know, I had to like change the tire up there on the side of the road, which was hard <laughs> yes because yeah, it was right. you know dark and yeah uneven ground you know the jack that's built into the car like it doesn't work very well and yep. all that yep. stuff uh, but it's like it's there it'll work if it's, it'll work great if you're sitting on a perfect flat level cement ground <laughs> yes yeah if you're working with a uh, you know broken asphalt on the side of the road not so much but the uh whenever uh we brought the the now popped uh wheel into the uh, serve, you know, the repair shop afterwards to get a, a new tire. They were like, I have never seen anyone take this much rubber off a tire before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, like I, so I'm almost, I've, I've always thought about that. Like what, what was I doing in the car that, allowed me to continue to drive it as far as we did. Right, right, right. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. To, to the point where like literally every other person who has a flat tire reacted to it sooner. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like to where the guy at the tire shop has not seen. It's like, this one hasn't come up. This one this hasn't come up. You unique have circumstance, unique sir. Circumstance. All I can think, Ben, is that my absolute, that instinct took over on an, on an unknowable level and that I just muscled the car off like I was able to maneuver it in such a way that I kept that tire from just 
forcing me to veer off the road. Wow. Extreme. Yes. So you're like a superhero. Basically. Yeah. Way, that's, what, that's my main takeaway. I was like, I must be a superhero. I can't. I can't wait for your kids <laughs> to find out. Like, yeah, that's it's right. Gonna, it's going to be a big day for them. It's like, wow. listen, kids, wow. if you have a flat tire, you have the right guy at the wheel. That's right. <laughs> because he will take it further than <laughs> he should. I take it further than I should have. <laughs> right. 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 Should, um, further than is he, that even seemed possible. <laughs> <laughs> to the guy at the tire shop. To the guy at the tire yeah. shop whose only job is to deal with exact this exact problem. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> My unique situation. That's right. Oh, man. But so, okay, like, yeah, continuing on this topic, though, it's like another one of those things. So, like, you're going through high school and, like, everybody is, like, learning how to, like, even date for the first time, mm-hmm. right? And it's, th- so this was, like, another topic that I was, like, you know, if they had a class in like, I don't know, ninth or 10th grade, that was like how to break up with somebody and how to be broken up with, you know, it's like, like, let's talk about some of the emotions that you're going to experience because otherwise we're just going to let you spin out and, and attempt to figure out what you're doing and not realize that you have a flat tire and carry on for a way longer than you should. Hey, 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 that's how you discover you have superpowers, Ben. I don't know. Well, there's that. I that's would say point. That, that's an interesting, like, yeah, I don't know, relationship stuff. That almost feels like you're, if it, to... To teach like the there's the proper way to be broken up with. That's like here's the way that you're the feelings you're allowed to have or something. Well, and it's not that. I think that it's it's more like um, I think that like early on and like this was the case for me. I won't speak for other people. I will speak for me. Um, was it was the case that like if I was going to break up with somebody, it was I so badly knew that it was like, I knew it was going to be emotional. Like I knew it was going to be hard. And the number one thing that I wanted to do was like lessen that. And so usually when it comes to a breakup, anything that you can say that will actually lessen the impact of breaking up with a person is you giving them some amount of false hope. Right. Because like, Otherwise, it is exclusively a negative conversation right. because it is it is you've got like that butt sandwich that I think we talked about in the very early stages of the pop, which is like you could sit down and be like, listen, you're great. The butt crack. Oh, the butt crack. The butt crack. Not a butt sandwich. Yeah. A, butt, a butt crack. Good clarification. Good clarification. Um, the butt crack. Because anything that was said before the butt crack basically doesn't matter. It's like, it's the worst time to compliment somebody when you are about to deliver a butt crack. I think you also want to avoid a butt sandwich, though. You don't want to be like, look, you know, you're great and all, but we need to break up. But we can still be friends. The butt there, sandwich. There's the butt sandwich. We found it. We found it. I'm so glad that I didn't. I didn't in, like. You know what, Marion Webster. Yeah, that's totally gonna be there. there. You go. Butt sandwich. Butt sandwich. Put me down You're for 2021. Welcome. 2021. <laughs> we just did it. I hope I get credit. Yeah. Ben Carlin coined ben this. Car- yeah. Right yeah. there. Um. But you're you're exactly correct. You're exactly correct because it's any it's like at that point too. You you're attempting to say like maybe sometime in the future it could work out or like maybe this thing could change and at that point in time this could work out and it's like the the best this this sounds bad but like the best breakup that I ever had in my life was the one where I was like so aware that any false promise was going to be the worst possible thing that I could do. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's kind of like the, like it's like one situation where it's like there, there is no lingering anything. It made that day incredibly hard, but the further that I get from it, it's like, it was so, it was the cleanest break because, because I was clear Right. You know, and it was like because I resisted the very tempting, you know, like notion to suggest that there is still some potential somewhere. Right. Maybe some other time. <laughs> like, you know, like. So you know. so the just like backing up there, are you saying that you wish you'd had like an official class where someone was like, now when you're breaking up with someone and it'll probably happen to you at some point in life, you want to make sure it's complete, a completely clean break. Well, okay. I mean, there's certainly tact involved with how you would deliver this particular message. Sure. I mean, it doesn't need to be like the gym teacher teaching you this particular idea, but um, it's, I, I think like you could almost have not like a psychology class where you learn about psychology, but almost like 
a class that is like specifically revolving around the idea of emotions. Mm. You know, it's like, what are you going to be going through? Like, what are the things like even even helping to outline to the person the idea that including that false hope? It's like like helping the people understand how that can and will be problematic. Right. You know, and it's like. I don't know. It's, I mean, it, it is, it's hard because, uh, you know, every, every single relationship out there is going to be like its own, you know, unique snowflake of a situation. But I still feel like there's that idea of like, if you have come to the point where you were deciding to break up with somebody, even if there is in your mind, the potential to revisit it later, it's like, y- y- that is something that, that is, it's almost like your own burden. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like you, <clears throat> At some point in time in the future, if you are like, I am going through grad school, I can't date somebody right now. This needs to be over. And you're like, I do like this person. I would love to revisit it in the future. It's like, you don't, you don't tell them that, you know, it's like, once you finish grad school, school, if they're still available, then it's like, I am done with school. I am now open to a relationship. Would you still be interested? You mm-hmm. know? And it's like, that way you're not like leaving that person, you know, on the hook, unable to move on. Mm. Cause like, that is like a big responsibility when breaking up with somebody is, is trying to make sure that they're not left just, you know, in like this limbo land of, of potential. Uh, oh, that's, it's, that should be a responsibility you take into consideration. I think some people intentionally, you know, that's the other half of it is that a lot of people, I think, it makes them feel safer to have you on the hook. The, the safety net. <laughs> yeah, 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 the yeah. safety net. But so that's, that is the thing though. It's like, is there, is there a way to like educate somebody on this particular idea or, or is there even some type of like, um, school of hard knocks, knowledge, wisdom, what have you to suggest that like, these are lessons that you need to learn on your own. I, I think no matter when it comes to like matters of the heart like this, yes. I think no matter what amount of book learning you try and do, the only real way to learn it is to just suffer through it. Like, you know, you can, you can, you can try and Hermione the situation and learn how to ride that broomstick, but you, it doesn't matter how much you, how much you read. If, uh, when push comes to shove, either you can fly or you can't. I understand. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly a good way to, and I'm not necessarily suggesting the idea that like, that you, you need to like book learn all of these particular things, but like we've, we've talked a lot about like forgiveness lately. We've talked about, I don't know, you know, different, different pieces of like psychology. But for me, one of the biggest ones that made a huge bit of difference was once I really firmly understood the stages of grief, which I specifically learned because we were making a video about how finding Nemo basically demonstrates Marlin going through the stages of grief. Right. Um, so like it was us making that video. It was like our own piece of content that like was both intended to be educational, but educational for me as well. Ah. I think that like understanding like when, when something, you know, happens as you were, you were going through each of those stages. It's like, I haven't left anger yet. It's like, I'm still mad, you know? And it's like being able to like, at the very least recognize that it's like, okay, I know I know where I am in this process and I know that I'm not at like, let's, let's communicate about it now. Now is not the time. You right. Know, like we, we haven't started. It like, does help you understand more like what you're going through. Yeah. For sure. And it does offer like, maybe like, you know, you're angry and that doesn't make you less angry, but at least you are able to identify that this is a regular pattern. Right. And that hopefully you will get through it, I guess. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing though. So it's like the, the very famous, like, it's not you, it's me. Like, breakup line it's like i bet that everybody knows even if you ultimately say that exact sentiment i bet you know better than to say those words because it's like it's so cliche you know it's like it's like you're it's it's been so talked about that chances are you know not to say it in that exact way Um, even though you could literally be saying like you've done nothing wrong it's my own personal situation which is the exact same thing yeah you know like that's that is the sentiment um but being able to recognize or at least have that type of consideration in mind i think if you had good ways to think about the other processes of going through breakups and stuff that they they i think that you could implement them i think it's possible yeah um, i think you're right it's probably not a, a direct here's how to do it here's what to expect but just having like conversations about it and what those kind of things might be yeah like will be would be helpful to people uh experiencing adolescence <laughs> yes yeah. yeah and i because I, I would say for me like one of the one of the big things about this particular problem in high school was like 
the ins and outs of either breaking up with somebody or being broken up with, I would say were the number one distractions from me focusing on school. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, this is, this is a situation where it was like, you know, I, I have like a biology test tomorrow, but also like this person is breaking up with me right now. It's like, I'm not going to be like, sorry, I have to go study to, you know, like, can we pick this up tomorrow? You know, it's yeah. like, like I didn't have that capacity at that age at all. Uh, I don't I still don't even think I would have that capacity. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's like, I don't know. I mean, do, do, does this make sense? Like, could you be on board with a world where you're, you're like better educated on this particular thing? I mean, on this particular thing, I think where we started was just on more things that were like commonplace household know-how. Right. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, it's, it's all under the umbrella of general stuff. You should know one one Okay. There yeah. you go. General, general one one Right. Life 101. With Ben. With Ben. Maybe that can just be, maybe that can just be like a, a new, a new channel idea. A it's new just channel like, idea. It's like, we're, we're just going to tackle stuff you should know. And like every, I'm sure that already exists. I bet this channel called Stuff You Should Know. I think um, I know Michael T. Martin used to have a channel called How to Adult, mm. and it was sort of stuff like this, like how to do your laundry. Amazing. Yeah, how to make coffee. I do remember having to call mom and ask her how to do laundry for exactly, the first time. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Way to go. There you go. Pretty good. I think I um I I know that because I made a video which was how to embrace your inner child that went up on that channel. Oh, nice. Yeah. How do you embrace your inner child? Oh, well, you can go watch the video if you want. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that code for it? I don't remember what I said. I mean, Ben, if my entire life is not a walking example of how to embrace your inner child, then I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's reasonable. Yeah, that is reasonable. Okay, so I have I have one last tidbit to leave you on uh, as as we as we maybe near near close of today's episode. Okay. Okay. So I have been talking. So I well, our kitchen renovation is like like ninety eight percent done. We still have to get like a backsplash put in, but otherwise like we have counters, we have functioning appliances, all the stuff, right? Very exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Um, but one of the things that we got during the renovation is like one of those cabinets where you open it and then there's like two trash cans inside that you can like pull out like on a slidey thing. Okay. Yeah. And so the front one is like the trash and then the back one is like our recycling bin. Mm -hmm. And the thing about our recycling bin that, that gets me all the time is that like we drink like canned, canned beverages in our house, probably more than anything else that specifically goes into the recycling bin. Really? Yes, I, I think so. You don't I have mean, like cardboard that goes in the recycling bin? Well, I have like big stacks of cardboard from like shipments and stuff that come in that I break down and put in like my my bin that gets picked up by the, the okay. city. So I have like a, like a separate big bin for that. This okay. is like the one in my cabinet. All right. Uh, so it's like, you know, the size of this. Hold your hands like... 30 inches apart. It's that big. Um, so one of the things that like I've really wanted to do for the longest time, we got one here for the office is get like a can crusher and me being me, you know, I, it needed to be like a fun can crusher. Right. So are our, not all can crushers fun. Well, they are all fun. Okay. But like even more fun, even more fun. Yeah, what makes get, it even more fun? You got to add that special sauce. Um, it's, it's a pneumatic can crusher. So it actually hooks up to like an air compressor. Okay. So it's like, it's like, if you can imagine like a piston that has one job, which is to crush a can. Okay. It's like you set your can in and then it like shoots forward when you press like a nice big, like green button. Okay. And it's like, Kachoosh! and then like the can drops into like, you know, the, the vessel below where you store all of your crushed cans. Cause you can store way more crushed cans than uncrushed cans. Right. Obviously. Obviously. And so I, it's been like something I've wanted to do for a long time. I've been super excited about it and it's like, okay, okay, this is cool and what i really want to do is install a tube that is basically like a laundry chute for cans up to our kitchen because our basement is right below where the pneumatic can crusher is okay so it'd be like whenever you finish your can you just walk over and there's like a pipe that sort of like you know, is is neatly put away let me be clear because alice would have you believe that it would just be like a pipe jutting out into the middle of our kitchen not that it would be like tucked away nicely mm -hmm. but it, you know it'd be like a like a three inch wide pipe that when you finished your drink, you could just go drop it into the pipe and it would drop straight through down below to our basement where you would have like a, like a, like a trash can that catches all of the, all the cans, all of the large cans. Yeah. And then, you know, like once a week or whatever, you could go down there and use the can crusher to like smash everything and like, you know, okay. properly dispose of it. But the goal for me is like, you know, I don't want to fill up this recycling bin under the cabinet constantly and all the time with cans because it would just be like, it's just too much. I don't wait. Why is it too much? Because they, I just constantly have to like take it out, you know, and it's but like, they're so, but, it, but they'd be crushed, right? No, they wouldn't be crushed because the crusher is downstairs. Why is the, okay. Let me, I, 
let me let me let me weigh in here. Okay, weigh in. Because your pneumatic can crusher sounds like uh, like a fancy piece of like Ben Carlin purchase tree. Certainly. Yeah, but I have to say, Ben. I have to say, I think you have taken, I think you have lost the spirit of the can crusher. I don't think I have. I think you, the fun, Ben, you've removed the true joy of crushing it with your hand. But but it's like, you get to press a button. No, Ben, Ben, the button push has nothing on the pulling of the lever. That is the tr- that I think I think you are you are removing joy from your life. No, absolutely yes. Hard disagree. Ben, the can crush the fun of the can crusher is using your hand to crush it. I don't think that that's the fun of it. I think it's the being crushedness. It's the efficiency of like how small the cans become. And but they many- become equally as small. I know, but I like to me if the smallness is what is great about it, then it's not like then I don't think there's anything wrong with how you crush them whether it be by hand or by button. Okay. So it's like, I think that the it's, it's like what I like to embrace is the fact that I don't have to unnecessarily overfill my recycling bin when most of it is just the air that exists inside of the cans when they could be small. Right. But you could, the problem is that then why can't the thing be upstairs next to your recycling can? Oh, well, I mean, the because it's underneath a cabinet. So there'd be like no way there'd be like if you were to mount a can crusher, like a wall mounted one like we have here at the office anywhere in my kitchen, it would have to be far enough away that you would like walk over like outside of the kitchen, crush the can, walk back over, open the cabinet, pull the thing out, put the crushed can in put it back, close the door, right? So your solution is instead to drop it through a hole in the floor, walk down the stairs, put it in a thing, push a button, put it in a thing. Okay, see, and you're you're using, uh, um, oh, logical fallacy. Okay, it's scare- am I? Scarecrow, yes. So you're using the logical fallacy, which makes what I am what I am saying sound equally ridiculous. Okay. Uh, or also false equivalency would be another one that could fall into this category. Because what I am saying is that like, if I have to continuously repeat the process of unnecessarily quickly overfilling my trash can to the point where I have to like consistently take it outside with like multiple trips over time, what this is doing is simplifying the process so that it's like a one-stop drop. No, but you won't have to take it out over and over because they'll be crushed when they go into the can the first time. If then you have to walk over across the room to crush the can and then put it in the bin. I mean, but then you're you're still right there. It's economies of scale because I feel like over time, if if it takes you that like extra like 30 seconds to do that process every single time versus simply dropping them in one spot and then like having like a dedicated time where you crush everything very quickly, then it's like you're you're not always doing a small task. Every once in a while, you're doing a small task. Does that make sense? I think you're I don't I just depends how long your small task would take. I don't know how long it takes to load up and crush a can with the button every time. Well, so that's the thing is I'm not saying like drop it through the floor, walk downstairs, crush it. No, I know, but I don't even know how long it would take to like remove a can from your collected bin of air filled cans, put it in, push the button like and then take it out of the machine and do another one. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't even have to take it out of the machine because when it crushes, it drops through like a slot. Mm -hmm. So you don't like you put the can in, push the button drops, push the can in, press the button drops. Mm -hmm. Is that do you follow? I follow. Okay, so I I bet I, I bet I could beat your machine with a hand crusher. I doubt it. I bet I could beat your machine. I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. It's on. All right. It's on. We will have we will have a competition. Okay. To see who can out crush the other, mm-hmm. and it is officially on. All right. So I guess my question for everybody else is then, because since I clearly can't convince Jay, is what level of ridiculous would it be to have effectively a laundry chute, but in the form of a discrete tube inside of your kitchen for the function of of exiting your cans elsewhere. Okay, well, let Ben know. I need to know. I need to know all of your information. Otherwise, I feel like we've we've reached a good stopping point. I think so. Because we we clearly can't go on. <laughs> we can. I, to. can ha, nailed it. Nailed <laughs> That's it. That's the corny joke for the day. <laughs> hey, there it is. There it is. There it is. All right, guys, if you want to uh, send in any feedback you have about the show, you can do so at popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any just like fun tidbits that you want to share with the rest of the popcorn culture community, you can do so over on Reddit, where we have like a fun and active page with lots of people who are doing all sorts of cool stuff. And if you want to support the show on Patreon, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Otherwise, until next week, pop, pop. pop.